All right, Devin here from Dye Precision. I'm out in uh, Detroit with Lone Wolf Paintball, and uh, we're gonna go over the uh, Dye DSR. Ooh, that's a good looking gun. What you gonna tell us about it? So I just wanna break this down, kinda go with some of the little details, um, you know, about some things to keep an eye on if you just picked one up or if you're in the market for one. Um, one of the really nice things about the DSR, it's a very simple gun. Um, you've got your, your simple to maintenance, simple to go through and play. It's a gun that you can just play with, you know, very easy to take the bolt out, lube the bolt, but there's not a whole lot of things to worry about. Um, within the electronics of the gun, you do have two different profiles you can save. So if you have a, if you want to have a profile for playing semi-automatic one weekend, then the next weekend you've got your tournament practice. You can have a, you know, the tournament, the NXL tournament uh, mode on your prior profile too. So you can switch back and forth between those. Obviously, before you play a tournament, you want to put that tournament lock on, um, but it's just something that you can kind of keep an eye on. Um, it's just an added feature. Um, starting with the gun, I mean, you've got your, your on-off airport here, your screw tank in. You've got a, a big big knob here so that when you do activate, turn the tank on, it's easy to turn, easy to twist. One thing that I, I do see from you know people that have the DSRs is when they do turn the on-off knob on, they're not putting it all the way on. So um, if you, when you, when you gas up the gun, if the knob doesn't pass this little little nub on the airport, the air pressure will actually turn the on off off and it'll bleed the air and you won't be able to shoot. So when you, when you turn it on, you've got to make sure that you, you go above that. Um, that's something that I, I see too often than not, that people just don't turn the airport on enough. And, you know, we get calls even about that at the office. Um, and then after walking them through it, it's, you know, it's like, oh, I just didn't know. You know, I thought it was there. So... That's something I'd, I'd say to keep an eye on. But um, okay, but it'll actually bleed the air? Yeah, so when you degas the gun, right? Mm -hmm. um, when you degas the gun, it'll bleed off all the air from inside the bolts, inside the dump, so it doesn't leave one okay. shot as a safety thing. So if, you, if, you, if it does bleed out the air, um, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna have anything in there if you try to pull that trigger. Mm. No, but that's good to know for, like you said, to, that it doesn't store that one shot that so many guns do. Yeah, you really don't need to take these grips off um, inside of these grips, you have the circuit board. Um, you can make any trigger adjustment settings from the outside. Um, but if you ever did need to take the grips off to access your regulator, that would be the only time you'd really suggest having to do so. Um, this gun operates off a nine volt battery, which the battery is stored in this, this front compartment here. Are the back grips, were those toolless or do you need to nail them? Um, so there is a set screw on each side that kind of holds it in place. So this is where your nine volt battery would go. I can, I'll take these grips off here right after this. Um, nine volt battery goes in front. You've got this uh, little locking tab here and it's got a, a open and, un and lock. So that way you kind of know which one is open or closed. Um, putting this back on, just be, uh, Get this as closed there. Go all the way forward. Just make sure everything's in there tight, and then you would uh, use a coin, or I'm using a part of a multi tool here, um, just to turn it and it snaps in place. Um, if you do ever want to take these grips off, they're it's toolless style, but there is one Allen key on both sides to take off. It's so a 564 Allen key, and you've got two small button head screws that will come off there from the front. To take the grips off, um, you have the, the front tab here, so grab this and pull this down towards the front of the gun to release the side. So, let's see if I can do this this way. Just, just can't. So, you can pull. Pull these grips, push down and pull toward, or pull and push down towards the bottom, and it releases the front tabs. And you slide the grips off the uh, the right and left side. And you can see your circuit board, um, and then the regulator, which is inside the bottom of the gun. Okay. Um, so you adjust your your pressure through the bottom of the SA, then. Yeah. So you adjust your velocity through the bottom here. It's a three sixteenth Allen key. You know, turning it in. You know, we'll, we'll close off the valve and reduce the PSI, bring it out, we'll turn the PSI up, increase your velocity. Um, 
Small adjustments all you need. If you're making adjustments to go lower, I would say lower it, then shoot the gun a few times before you get a true reading. Um, and then if you're going to increase the pressure, you know, obviously, you know, bring that out. And I would just do it in small increments just so you're not worried about putting too much pressure through the gun. Um, once the air, you know, goes through the regulator, it goes into the bolt kit um, and or into the solenoid. The solenoid controls it before it goes into the bolt kit. Um, and then you've got the bolt in the back of the gun with with the air line. Um, it's very direct. So you you have air going straight up this path here into the solenoid and then into the bolt. So there's really not a whole lot of area or, or travel room for, for the air has to go through as far as a volume standpoint. Um, the bolt coming in and out, you've got this back button here and some little uh, grooves where you can put your fingers in so you can push the button and then use your index finger and middle finger to, to kind of pull it out. This is definitely not a, a bolt that you need to, you know, you do need to have some lube on it, but it doesn't need to have all the lube in the world. Um, I've seen a lot of times there's more lube than it's needed and it ends up getting lube inside the fruit breech, um, lube around the eye pipe, you know, causing, causing that. Um, the one thing that I would kind of be um, the most cautious about as far as uh, um, from, from a maintenance standpoint or, or taking, let me get this O-ring off here. So we've got the bolt tip O-ring is, um, so with your, your bolt pieces, um, is making sure that there's lube on this O-ring here um, on the edge of the bolt guide. This O-ring is always under pressure, um, and also you have the bolt piece that slides over it. So those are a couple of the, the main critical O-rings that I would say always need to make sure you've you've got lubed up. Other than that, you know, to taking the gun apart, you know, cleaning it off and, and lubing, you know, the the moving O-rings right here. On the outside, um, there's really not a whole lot else that the player is going to have to do on a regular basis. Um, you know, if you're going out to play, you know, I, I would say definitely, you know, if, you've, if you're done playing, I would say pull your bolts off, clean off any anything that's on there, um, and then before you go out to play, just making sure you got a little bit of lube on, on those O-rings there. Um, with the DSR, you do get a uh, a die barrel, die two-piece barrel. You also have within the DSR an eye pipe, so this is the similar to the same. This is the same eye pipe that comes in the M3 Pluses. It's a Gen 4 eye pipe, so it's a really thick polycarbonate. You've got uh, ball detents that are independent of each other, so you can you know take off one and replace it. Um, and you'll see that they're a, a triangle shape instead of a round shape. Um, the the whole reason for this is this helps to make sure the paintball when it does go past the ball detents, it goes through. It goes more of a straight direction instead of having any chance of you know rolling up or on the, on the ball detent itself, having that uh, that flat surface. This eye pipe does work in an M3 as well as a CZR, um, as well as the M2s. So they're all kind of can show the same one. Um, for the trigger, you do have some trigger adjustabilities, and I've got the grips off so you can easily see this. Um, you've got a spring um, that actually moves the trigger, helps move the trigger forward um, once it's hit the switch. You do have an adjustment screw, so you can adjust the spring tension. Um, it's actually right there. Um, the screw would be right here. Um, and then on the opposite side of the gun, you've got your, your forward and rear travel. So if you want to, how far forward do you want the trigger to go before it activates the micro switch and how far for, uh, backward do you want the trigger to go after activating the micro switch. Um, you can also adjust these while having the grips on. Um, it just, it just having the grips off makes it easier to see for, for the video. Question about the barrel real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, you said it's two pieces at the same uh, ULS as the uh, M3 Plus? Or? So it is not a ULS barrel. Um, this is a die core barrel. It's very similar to our original Ultralight barrel. Um, it's actually got the Ultralight barrel tip. Um, the barrel back, it's a 688 barrel back. Um, it's just that some of the outer, outer uh, profile is a little bit different. Okay. Um, you guys got this one screwed together pretty tight too. Yeah. But um, the barrel that comes in the stock with all the DSRs is a 688 for the bore size. And then uh, I think I mentioned before is you do have the different player profiles, you know, one and two. Um, and, you know, with the, the joystick on the back, it's, it's a five direction joystick. You know, you can go up, down, left, right. So you can go through your settings. You've got the OLED screens, easy to read. So it helps tell you through like, this is what this setting is. So you don't have to fumble through lights. You know, it makes it easier for you. You're reading what you're changing. Um, instead of having to, you know, look at a light color and go back to a manual or, or memorize the, the sequence. Um, 
there are software updates that could, could be done. This gun has the latest software on it. Um, but if you ever do need to update software, um, there's a, actually a video that, that, uh, that Tony's in and it tells you how to uh, go through and do the programming and uh, update the software of the DSR. So you can go ahead and check that one out as well. I can't think of anything else. I mean, that's a solid gun. Uh, it's a great marker. Uh, available at LoneWolfPaintball.com, of course. Um, anything else you want to add? You I know, there, I mean, there's some other features. Um, like we've actually come out with a different bolt tip. Um, we've had a different can as well. Um, we've got the flex face bolt, which has a softer bolt tip face um, to help if you're shooting some fragile paints. Um, there's also the DSR flex flow can, which helps to change the shot, shot signature of the gun and make the gun feel a little bit softer um, as well. And those are some aftermarket parts that you can you know, pick up and purchase and, and add on to your DSR. Oh, real quick before you put those grips all the way back on, uh, where are the uh, screws to drop the frame if you want to. You don't have to take it off, just oh, yeah. kind of show so, us where it's at. So everything is, is hidden. So you have the, uh, the rear frame screw. If you tool the bolt out, it's in the, the back of the bolt there. And then the front frame screw is, is hidden underneath this uh, battery cover. So you tool the battery cover off and you have your front frame screw to pull the grips there. Um, no eye wires or anything will come back and forth. Um, everything is, is encased. You have your battery IWAR and solenoid, there's a separate circuit board in the top that it plugs into. So you don't have to worry about when you do pull the frame apart, anything coming apart or, or breaking. Since there's no wire, does that mean we're going to see a mech frame for this soon? You know, there, there, could, there could be something in the works that we could see with a mechanical frame with this gun. You know, right. only time will tell, but uh, you know, it's definitely possible. World Cup's coming soon, guys. <laughs> I have to wait and see. <laughs> All right, awesome. Uh, like I said, guys, LoneWolfPaintball.com, you can get all your dye needs and wants. Uh, make sure you follow us on Instagrams and Facebook and TikTok and all those places. And of course, go check out Dye Precision, Dye Paintball, if you will. Uh, check out their website. They've got all kinds of new stuff and their latest and greatest and all their social medias. They're sharing videos, they're sharing photos, uh, and they're going to share their own stuff before we can even get it. So check them out. Sounds good. See you guys later. Thanks, Devin. Bye.